Perhaps one of the world's most famous, or infamous, animals is the humble skunk. But it's not only famous in the human world, it's also well known in the animal kingdom. For animals that live near the skunk, seeing that flash of black and white fur stokes a primal fear of being very stinky. But how stinky is it? And why does it smell like a burning tire at Coachella? It's all part of letting potential predators know who's boss here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. If you want to check that out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at LD Taxonomy or visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. Check it out. The artwork is really great. And you can see all the artwork from our in entire show including all of the great work that brian did it's fantastic please check it out and follow us it's great we would like to hear from you and also a very special thank you to our patrons uh or not not our patreons our patrons (laughs) uh tristan taylor jesse raspolich carol raspolich and uh paul chomo thank you so much for your support it's greatly appreciated thanks for helping us keep the lights on and today we're talking about a little guy that is as stinky as he is striped. But more on that later. Yeah, I never know when to put the ED on there. Like, blessed? Sometimes it's blessed. It makes Sometimes it, it's blessed. It make, except for blessed and, blessed and blessed. Cursed and it cursed. Usually, yeah, but besides those, it's just usually funnier to make it striped. <laughs> or, I think it all, it also has to do with music. Yeah. Like if it's in music, you need that extra syllable. If it if you need that extra syllable in a hymn, and you haven't done enough of your en- enough work to rework the verse in order to make it fit, then you just you just make that syllable uh, something you yeah. pronounce, and just confuse. Or you put the apostrophe, and make it even shorter. Yeah, like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that gets me every time. Um, but what are we talking about? We're talking the about striped the striped boy. skunk. Yeah, this is this is one of mine. I have a skunk. No, it's uh, it, uh, it was. This is one of my suggestions, and it's just it's been a while since we've done just a, an animal celebrity. We used to do that like every once in a while. You'd be like, oh yeah, we do all these like super underground animals you've probably never heard of before, um, but and then we do like the rhino. Um, or like the giraffe or something like that. Um, but I figured like, what about a skunk? What about our old friend, Pepe Le Pew? Otherwise known as the stink weasel. (laughs) And odor in the court. (laughs) And Bibby came up with that one. Uh, she's my, she's my, uh, my muse for nicknames. (laughs) And by that, I go down. I go downstairs at the end of the workday, and I'm like, "Can you think of any nicknames for the skunk?" <laughs> and then she walks. Around, as we're all cleaning up downstairs, she's just like throwing things at the wall, and then they stick. And I'm like, "I'm writing that down." So, thanks, baby, for that great nickname. But you want to taxonomize this bad boy? Sure. Um, it is in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom Animalia. It's in the phylum Chordata. It's in the class Mammalia, and here's where it diverges from you. It's in the order Carnivora. We're carnivores, right? I feel like we should... We're we not in the order Carnivora, I, though. I feel left out. Also, we're not really carnivores. We, we're, we're omnivores. We're omnivores, which makes you a carnivore, uh, just not exclusively. Yeah, uh, it's in the family Mephit today. Yep. But before that, it's in the super family Mustaloidae. Yep, mustelids. So, Those are the weasels. Yeah. Weasels, 
uh, raccoons. Well, yeah, Ot- they're in the they're in the same su- super family. Otters, red Stoops. pandas, yeah, wolverines. All those fun, all those f- fun long weasel boys. Yeah, or the stocky, uh, short limbed, scary boys. But they're all long. Yeah, but sometimes you can't see it because of the fur. Yeah. Or are they are they long, or are they are their torsos proportionally long compared to their leg length? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's that's it. Like, they're they're all like dachshund shaped. <laughs> They're in the genus Mephitis. Walking in Mephitis. What? What? Have you ever walking in Memphis? I've never done that. I've never. I've only been to Nashville. It's a song. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the species is Mephitis Mephitis. Very original. Bison. Mephitis bison. Mephitis. Yeah, Mephitis, Mephitis. So since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Critter Groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question. The question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal? Or what is the term of entry? What is the collective noun? We have one for skunks. So that's great. I always, I always like when I don't have to go up like to the class or like the, the general group of animals. If you saw a group of skunks, would you say it's A, a burrow of skunks, B, a cranny of skunks, C, a stench of skunks, or D, a run of skunks? Burrow, cranny, stench, or run? Stench stench is a little bit on the cute little muscle of nose. (laughs) Yeah, because it's a stench. It's on. It's in the nose. Uh, you know what? Whatever. I'm going with stench. Final answer. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, you got it right. It, ha- it would have to be. It is a stench. Uh, it 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 is, it is on the nose. I will give that to you. <laughs> but you you could have been like, it's a, is it a stench? Is it an odor? I, is it a fragrance? <laughs> I, I thought about doing that, but that would have been, I. I I feel like cruel and unusual, but I feel like you really haven't extended that same kind of courtesy to me. <laughs> so I don't know why I was so nice, but I definitely could have been like, yeah, stench, sm- smell, odor. Paw and odor. That could have been a nickname. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I mean, it is now you made, you, you got it. Paw and order, paw and odor. <laughs> If I had if I had more time to think about like how to take that odor th- odor nickname to the next level, uh, you would, would you like to know what it looks like? I think I have a pretty good idea, but why don't you tell me? Okay, the skunk is a stout carnivore. It's that it's that carnivore shape you know and love. Uh, the shark with yeah, it's, <laughs> no carnivora. It's a different thing. Doesn't just mean eating meat. It's it describes a general skeletal shape, especially skull shape. Everything in Carnivora has that, that con- cone-shaped skull with powerful jaws. They have short legs, a stocky body, and a big bushy tail. You know them, you love them. Uh, it walks on the full foot of its forepaws. And I think the back... F- I saw a skeleton and it looked like the back legs were a little bit lifted, kind of like, like a dog. Or a cat, but maybe that was just, you know, it standing on its tippy toes on the back. But its front paws are definitely like f- full footed on the on the ground like a bear or like a human. I was typing in Paul walking and I almost typed in. It was like Paul Walker. Yeah, it's Paul Walker. <laughs> uh, while you do that, they are sh- sh- uh, these striped skunks are black and white. They are mostly black with white backs and a black stripe that runs down their back. They differ from their kin, the hooded skunk, that does not have the black center stripe. Okay. But that brings us to the part of the description when we need to talk about how big it is. It's so welcome to the... It's called plantigrade. <laughs> That's welcome. right. There you go. Should have thought. Yeah, planter's warts. 
plantigrade. So welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words Measure Up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We do have a new Measure Up intro from Nora. Thank you, Nora. Uh, but also, we have listener mail from Braun. Ooh. So let's t- let's talk about the mail first. Um, email. We didn't get any snail mail. We we don't have a way for you to send the snail mail. Um, we need a PO box. Yeah. So one second. Yeah. So by by the name Bron B R O N. Where do you think this uh, individual is from? Scandinavia. No, that's a good guess. That was my only guess. <laughs> this well, well, here's the here's what Braun writes. I just wanted to say how much I've been loving the podcast. As a zoology student here in Melbourne, uh, it's Melbourne, but I've heard that you're supposed to pronounce it Melbourne. Melbourne, yeah. Melbourne, Australia. I am, uh, but we have a Mel Melbourne in Florida spelled the same way, but it's Melbourne. Uh, Ours is the fake one, I guess. Just like yeah. there's an Athens and a Rome in Georgia, so and a Wellington here, whatever. <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's named after the same guy, Mister Melbourne. I don't know that there's like a big like there's like a little Australia in Melbourne. John Melbourne. <laughs> so he says, "I'm a bit biased, but I love how you guys bring the taxonomy without alienated without alienating the non-taxonomy nerds." That might be because we're not that we're not taxonomy nerds in that we are real scientists. We we are the the lay people as well. We are we're we're mild language enthusiasts. Um and so you can listen to us struggle through long Latin and Greek terms. But that was that's that's a bit of high praise. Huh. We managed yeah. to straddle the line between making it educational and also not the worst (laughs) (laughs) he uh he also says i'm sure you get a million suggestions for animals to cover but these guys are super cool and he sends a link we have some at the melbourne aquarium melbourne aquarium where i work he works at the melbourne aquarium this is a real genuine animal guy Mm -hmm. uh and some are so extravagant. Also, each one has a unique pattern of spots on their sides. So if divers manage to get photos of one not already in science database, in a science database, they could name that individual. So I imagine there are a lot of Daves in the leafy, weedy sea dragon world. So he's talking about sea dragons. That would yeah. be a good. Uh... That would be a good one to go go for. Actually, I I was looking at I, could, I was just looking at weird animals, on on like a big big long blog post, and sea dragons came up, and I was like, huh, I've seen a Pokemon that looks like that. <laughs> it's a poison dragon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh that's awesome. I'm also incredibly flattered that you think we get lots of suggestions. <laughs> 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 we get some suggestions and, and we get, we get a lot of suggestions from the same people, mm-hmm. people with their finger on the pulse of the animal world. You, you gotta, cause the times they are a change in. <laughs> he, uh, he ends with anyway, thanks so much for the work. I bought a shirt. He bought a shirt. This guy and rocks. I'll record, <laughs> I'll record a measure up at some point. And also it's millimeter. He says. It's still millimeter. Millimeter? Yeah. It's not a millimeter? It's not a millimeter. It's not a millimeter. It's a millimeter with a dash. Uh, so it must also be kilometer. <laughs> Centimeter. Anyway, without further ado. Thank you, Braun. That's awesome. And thank you, Braun. Thanks for buying a shirt. If you guys want to buy a shirt, thanks. you can go on teespring.com. Slash... Wait, wait, which way? Is it teespring.com slash LD taxonomy or LD taxonomy slash teespring? There's a, you can just go to LD taxonomy.com and there's a link yeah, to, yeah. Uh, to teespring. Do that. Um, 
So, uh, uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the, buying the shirt. Thank you for the promise of the measure up. Thank you for the suggestion. That was a, that was a, a media email. That was an Arby's of emails. Yeah, that, that was a, a beef and cheddar melt. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Measure up. We love a good melodic measure up. Angelic. Special, especially from Nora, who puts the team on her back. <laughs> Angelic. That was nice. Thank you again, Nora. If you want to help Nora out, send in a measure up intro. <laughs> yeah, we got so many new listeners from, you know... Uh, pocket cast, come send in a measure up. You don't have you don't have to sing if you don't want to, but Nora chose to grace us with some beautiful notes. So thank you, Nora. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about body length. Since you said this was a long boy, they're between fifty-two and seventy-seven centimeters or centimeters. That's 30.3 inches. Okay. So how many stink blasters toys go into the length of a striped skunk? Uh, Man, I feel like I missed out on something from the 90s. Good guess. Here's a hint. Stink blasters was a line of children's toys that was popular in the early 2000s. Oh. The toys were plastic figurines of boys wearing grunge-style clothing. Three series of toys were created, uh, but only two of them were officially released. You could collect individuals named Barf and Ben, Tony Anchovy, and Skunk Punk. (laughs) When the plastic toys were squeezed, they would emit a foul smell. The toys contained toxic cyclohexanon and tooline, though the levels were low enough to be safe. Huh. Huh. Uh, like these were like, if you look when, once you've guessed, made your guess, look up a picture. I think they'll be familiar to you. I feel like I remember these in like at the grocery store in like these, um, machines that took like a, a quarter and you could get one in like one of those little capsules. Wow. That was a very good hint, but okay. So. My memory of them is smaller and more and like sl- the packaging was different. When I looked them up, look these up online, it was like in like the typical like cardboard backing plastic front um, toy packaging from the 2000s. So don't let the fact that they are that can't like those candy machines, those, those uh, gumball machines or with the sticky hands small. Yeah. I'm going to say four inches, which brings us to seven and a half. Uh, Grunge boys go into the length of Mr. Skunk. Stink blasters? Yeah. Final answer? Yeah. Correct answer was 10.1. Oh, I almost said 10. I was going to say three inches. That's why I was holding up my hand. I was like, that's about what would fit into one of those, like, you know, those gumball machine things about three inches, but you know, if they doubled him over, then four inches would work. And so what was your final guess? Seven and a half. Uh, so you gotta see that's not yeah, good no, enough that... for nursing school. Not good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look these up. Stink blaster. I am seeing something completely different. I'm seeing this gun. No, no. All right. I also saw that. I am seeing some dudes. Okay, I do yeah, see some them. punk boys. Grunge clothing. These these guys are grotesque. Yeah, they're nasty. They're, <laughs> they are young nasty men. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk weight. Uh, let us know if you ever had any stink blasters. Oh, you could collect a lot of them. They're, these, oh yeah, these things are like, like crazy bones. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Crazy Bones? <laughs> oh, I was obsessed with Crazy Bones. I wanted to collect Did you play the all. game? It's like it was like a uh 
kind of like marbles that the game just like pokemon cards i had no interest in playing the game i only wanted all of the things <laughs> let's talk weight they're between 1.8 to 4.5 kilom- kilograms <laughs> <laughs> just this just this island sized skunk what is this a Miyazaki no, no, no. movie it's that, it's that long but it's proportions are the same just really long it's just this huge snake snake <laughs> skunk uh, they're for 4 to 9.9 pounds okay 10 pounds so how many striped skunks go into the amount of stinking bishop cheese that is produced each year have you ever heard of stinking bishop cheese? Mm, that's that was one of my favorite indie bands. <laughs> right, right, right uh, next to uh, 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 what is it? Uh, the oh, uh, Andrew Jackson Jihad. <laughs> oh yeah, just a random Here- assortment of uh, of of words. Red jumpsuit apparatus. Stinking Bishop's Cheese. <laughs> it does sound like it. Like maybe even a ska band. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go, ska band, or just just yeah, a hipster like, uh, tuneless guitar songs. Stinking Bishop's Cheese. Well, here's a hint. Stinking Bishop Cheese is a cheese made from the milk of Gloucester breed cattle, uh, by Charles Martel and Sons. In Gloucestershire, England, it gained international notoriety when Gromit used the cheese to revive an incapacitated Wallace in Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. I saw that for the first time like three years ago. So you have heard of... I have heard of... You've at least seen Stinky Bishop Cheese. It's, it, the, it was, it's there somewhere in my subconscious, completely, completely buried. Um, because I mean, there's just a lot of cheese that goes around when it comes to Wallace and Gromit. In fact, <laughs> that's the, when Bibby and I give cheese to, you know, the kids we're just constantly going like, it's cheese Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> like constantly. <laughs> it's one of those things that like we, we quote to an unhealthy level <laughs> that will like the kids will just like end up saying to one of their friends later in life and they'll be like what the what heck the are heck you are talking, talking? <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the crackers grommet and then we do the we do that thing where like they like the animation style with the giant like grin and they like shake their hands like they're holding those shaken weights or whatever and like oh like from uh, the same thing that they do in chicken run like jeez <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're watching the video, you can see this. But, um, <laughs> anyway, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hit with the kids. Um, all right. How, many, how much Bishop's Cheese is made each year? And probably like a, 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 a decent amount after the just raging success that Wallace and Gromit is and has been. You say that. But it's true that after the movie, um, it's like had 500% growth in sales of that cheese. What? Because it went from one person buying it to five? (laughs) Maybe. Cheese is pretty big in like. Yeah, I mean, that had to res that the whole concept of Wallace and Gromit is based on cheese. Their very first thing was them going to the moon to get. No, no, not just big in the show. I think cheese cheese is like wine, where there, there's people that get really into it. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I just it has to be big in the UK because that resonated with people in the UK. But Wallace like and he, Gromit is also a UK thing. Yeah, they they're supposed Wallace represents like a typical, like n- normal UK person who wants to have his tea and his cheese and crackers and stuff, and, and makes like and, a and Ru- has Ru- Goldberg a, machines. <laughs> And has a hyper intelligent dog that does all the work for him. Um, I'm gonna say uh, ten thousand pounds. <laughs> Literally, no idea um, on how much stinky cheese is made on an industrial scale. Um, so that's 
Oh, well, that's easy because it's about 10 pounds. So the answer is 1,000. 1,000 skunks worth of, of cheese. Final answer? Yeah, final answer. It, the correct answer is 4,453.7 skunks. Eh, so it's... 20 tons. With, uh, British tons. T-O-N-N-E-S. Tones? Tones. Uh, that's 44,902 or 44,092 pounds. Four times yep. what you said. A little more than yep. that. Yep. So that is uh that is that is not within the fifteen percent rule. So not a W. But at least I got the same I'm just surprised I got the same the correct number of digits. Because I was I wouldn't have been surprised if you were like it's a it's like in the millions of pounds. It's yeah, so. well like would you be able to have even a ballpark guess of like literally any kind of cheese how much is made <laughs> per year? No. <laughs> Like I imagine, I imagine if it's American craft, cheese it would... is like um like what is it five hundred thousand tons? I don't know, but like stinky cheese is like so um. It's, what's the word? Niche. Yeah, niche. What's the what starts with an E? Uh, uh, esoteric. Eclect- esoteric. There we go. I keep. <laughs> Keep when you say eclectic, but that's not the right yeah. word. Um, esoteric, yeah. It's. Uh, I've tried some some sneaky cheese before, and I'm a huge cheese fan, but I am not a cheese connoisseur, and that day taught me well. Because it tasted like um, well, I was way plant off. dirt. See, I was way off. There's about 13.25 billion pounds oh pounds okay all right i was way off yeah got some fast facts for us yeah so the striped striped skunks live in north america and may be found as far north as central canada close to the arctic circle and as far south as mexico uh uh, they can live in a variety of habitats including woodlands open fields rocky rocky ravines and scrublands. Skunks mostly eat insects. I didn't know that. But they particularly like uh, grasshoppers, crickets, beetles, and bees. Uh, they also may also eat crayfish, worms, and other arthropods. When it gets uh, when they get desperate in the winter, uh, they may eat vertebrates like mice not vertebrates i I assume if you're eating a mouse you're eating the vertebrates as well but vertebrates (laughs) like (laughs) mice bird chicks reptiles frogs fish and voles Uh, they may also supplement their diets with berries corn and nightshades so they eat a lot of different things and live in a lot of different places isn't nightshade poisonous nightshades yeah, nightshade is poisonous, but nightshade is also like a broad category that includes tomatoes. It also does a set amount of damage based on your level, your Pokemon's That's right. level. <laughs> uh, skunks don't have many natural predators, but birds of prey may kill and eat them if they are skilled enough. Mammals like coyotes, bobcats, foxes, and badgers avoid them unless they are extremely, extremely hungry. I wonder why. I wonder why. Uh, they mate once per year in the spring. Males will travel four kilometers, or that's 2.5 miles, each night looking for a mate. Um, litters of two to 12 kits are born in a den that was dug or taken over by their mothers. Mothers and kits will spend the winter in their den. Um, when they emerge in the spring, young skunks will hang out with their mom until they strike out on their own around three months later. So their childhood is three months outside the den. Uh, Mm -hmm. But in some cases, multiple females and a single male will share a den to get out of the cold through the winter months. They may come out and look for food during the winter. So I don't, they typically don't like hibernate like a bear would hibernate. So they might come out in, in the winter and like look for berries and stuff like that. Um, But they'll mostly rely on body fat reserves to make it through to the spring. Same. 
Yeah. I wish. <laughs> I went on a weight loss program every winter. No, it's more like the opposite because of the holidays. It's the opposite of a weight loss program. You pack it on and just survive on that for the entire spring? That's what it, what we should do. But it's more like you pack it on and then you're, you're <laughs> you, not beach body ready. <laughs> just throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas, you're just packed. You're just packing on those pounds, and then you don't eat until Easter. <laughs> that's the yeah. that's the healthy habits of these uh, wonderful animals. <laughs> and then you have diarrhea since Easter's, but mm-hmm. um, that's all I got. I'm sure there's nothing more interesting. We've talked about everything there is to talk about when it comes to skunks, right? Yeah, the only pre- reason anybody knows about them is because they've got those like black and white stripes, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Because like they don't even blend in to their environment, so you know why do why do things keep a wide berth? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> this gross cat is well known for having a smelly tuchus. <laughs> for you out there in podcast, you. <laughs> uh, no, there's uh so yes, skunks smell bad, really bad. Uh, they have two glands called anal glands they're you know where they're located um the when the skunk is threatened it will lift its tail and release a spray from both of these glands that violates the geneva convention (laughs) i watched a video of this and they showed us close-up of this and i will never be able to remove that from my brain um it is it's now a part of who I am that I that I've <laughs> that I've seen this, and I I strongly do not recommend this. <laughs> doing the same, um, just just a just a slow motion Zack Snyder cut of of a close up sh- shooting out there, stinkiest gun in the West, which is by the way the name of this major fact. Um, so the spray itself is made up of chemicals. Uh, called Thiols, T-H-I-O-L-S, um, which is it's a bunch of stuff, but mostly like sulfur and hydrogen atom combinations. Um, and this is, Thiols are pretty prominent in things like uh, rotten or decaying flesh and poop. So, you know, it kind of serves as a major deterrent. Like, hey, don't eat this. <laughs> um, this is bad for you. It is... You know, it it, 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 hit, it hits all of the biological switches in mammals to not come near it. Um, except for, unless you're like my dog who sometimes eats whatever fecal matter he finds on the ground. Because he's disgusting and I think a broken mammal. Um, but so but other, you know, wild mammals that have all their instincts intact, like they're they're. Their, their instinct is to get as far as possible from something that smells like this. Um, and it can even immediately induce vomiting. Um, I almost said in, like involuntarily, but like... So while you were talking, I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrifying. Join me. <laughs> it's the science of skunk spray by Join Animal Logic. You can, you can all go and watch it. If you, I mean, if you want to do that to your psyche... It's a sure. color I didn't expect it to be. <laughs> the uh, the the aperture, the glands, um, or the or or the, the substance. The, ap- the aperture is typical. <laughs> the glands that poke out. Why are they purple? Why are they like that? They're 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 purple. They are swollen with juice, and the juice is like <laughs> mustard yellow. This is. Uh... Mustard gas. Yeah. It's th- mustard yellow. This is why it violates the con- Geneva Convention. This is a deeply unsettling conversation. Um, <laughs> whether or not you've seen this, the video. Um, so, this spray can reach up to 20 feet. So, that's that's really far, considering how small this animal is. Um, and it's most it's most accurate within 6 feet. But you know, still, you're you're if you can see it, 
uh, pretty clearly you are most likely in range. Um, and the you can the smell can be smelled for up to a mile. <coughs> so everybody in the realm knows uh, that a skunk is nearby, and that someone is unhappy. Females will spray males when you know they're rejecting their advances. So um, that's rude. Uh, very rude. Um, and males will spray each other uh, over territory. It's, this is just how they interact with the world around them. This is how they fight. This is how they uh, they date. And this is how they protect themselves. Um, if it get and they'll, they'll aim for your face. So this isn't like like what they train cops to do, which is like aim for center mass. No, they go they go for the face um, because you know it arcs. If it doesn't hit your face, it's going to get you all over the chest, and you're still going to be unhappy. Um, but it causes temp it can cause temporary blindness and extreme irritation uh, if it gets into your eyes. Um, on top of just just this this horrible smell. <laughs> um, and I've only once been close to something that, like an area that had been sprayed by a skunk. I've never been personally sprayed by a skunk, and I've never had like a dog or something that's been sprayed by a skunk. Although, you know, my wife Bibby has, because uh, she used to live out in the country, and uh, it's nasty stuff. And you might think, uh, if you're if you're continuing to watch this animal logic, uh, this uh, the you already know the answer to this, but you might think that tomato juice works because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, but it is not the answer. Tomato ju- that is that is a, a, a wives' tale is not true. Tomato juice um, is just bathing yourself or your dog in tomato juice to get rid of skunk smell is uh, gonna leave you stinky and is a, a waste of tomato <laughs> juice. Um, what you actually need is hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and soap, which is incidentally also how you make a very clean uh, science fair volcano. So, huh. because baking soda and hydrogen peroxide expand rapidly in foam, um, uh, and then you add soap to it, and you're just, you're gonna it's gonna get very sudsy very fast. I but, imagine you don't want to get in there with any open cuts, though. It'll be stingy. Although it will clean the wound. Hydrogen peroxide doesn't sting. Alcohol it, stings. Hydro- whenever I'd get a cut and we'd pour a hydrogen peroxide on it, it would just get all white and fizzy. And I'd be <laughs> like, whoa, that's cool. But I'd be afraid that it was going to sting, but then it didn't. You can also brush your teeth with hydrogen peroxide. I have done that. I think we've talked about this on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um but anyway, yeah, if you get sprayed by a st- skunk or one of, like, a cat or a dog that you have gets sprayed, um, you know, just these simple household items will uh, make meth. I mean, uh, you know, just clean your clean your pet or yourself. Um, so this turns out to be a genius self-defense mechanism. And we've talked about this quite a bit on the show. Because, oh, like, one of the big th- questions that I have sometimes... Uh, is that if your self-defense mechanism involves your your attacker dying, um, and even more so if it involves you most likely dying, something like a poison dart frog, it's like, well, what have you accomplished? <laughs> um, you know, you you're you're gonna die, and or your your attacker is not gonna be able to go spread the word Um, the thing about that is animals usually don't spread the word unless it's genetically well some things some some behaviors are taught um and that's the thing with a skunk predators aren't killed or maimed they are instructed Uh, (laughs) they are traumatized (laughs) now that coyote or cat or hawk or whatever will sit its children down on its knee and tell them the story of how they received a face full of anus juice that one time that they tried to eat that black and white cat thingy and now but i mean it's it's unlikely that that will happen but the good thing about it is that like it's not unlike like squid ink it helps them escape it's not unlikely that um that 
um that like let's say a coyote and her pups a coy- a coyote that has been sprayed by a skunk is with her pups and they encounter a skunk and the coyote and the they leave the coyote ushers her cubs away and the cubs are taught to avoid just the black and white badger thing and that, that's why kinda like that's kind of like how um a cheetah cubs look sort of like honey badgers so that predators that just merely glance at them would be like, mm, it's probably not worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to like slice my jugular if I try to kill it. Um, yeah, so it's, it, I mean, it is, a, there is a, they're still, you know, ex, um, studying this, but there's a degree to where things are taught. Um, and the, the, I mean, the real takeaway is that these, is that skunks don't really have very many natural predators. Um, they are really only attacked by things that are starving or things that feel threatened by the skunk itself. But most sane anim- animals that otherwise would prey on a small weasel thing, um, they don't. They don't even try. And e- and it's like either they've all been sprayed at some point or there's, there's some like... In- there's some learned behavior happening here, um, and seeing the bright, the the stark black and white coloration teaches them not to do this. Um, but yeah, so everyone gives the, the skunk a wide berth. He's a sensitive soul, though he seems thick-skinned, and it hurt that his friends never stood. Downwind. There are skunks in Africa too, so we could have done that. That skunk. And it would have made more sense with the Pumbaa reference. <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing a North American animal. A good old-fashioned skunk. And that's all I got. That's all I got. All right, so that was the Striped Skunk. For you out there in Podcastia, stay out of harm's way. Earn your stripes. And use your glands to the best of your ability, like the Striped Skunk, here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> I almost said spray your enemies with uh stinky liquid but I feel like this p- people might take that literally and actually do it so I don't want to be responsible for like for, for a spraying you know <laughs> <laughs>